that was about the p1 radiation model now let us move to next radiation model which is the dtrm dtrm stands for discrete transfer radiation model the main assumption of the dtrm is that radiation leaving the surface element in a certain range of solid angles can be approximated by a single ray so now the radiation transfer equation is solved along a single line or straight line the dtrm integrates this intensity equation comes up with this equation now the integration is done along a series of rays starting from boundary faces the azimuthal and polar direction coordinates are used to define the rays used in dtrm when the solver integrates his radiative transport equation we get what is seen in the second equation shown the dtrm determines the new intensity is using the radiant intensity at the start of the incremental path which comes from the boundary condition that is i0 or i0 so this is the new intensity this is the intensity which comes from boundary condition the energy source in the fluid due to radiation is then is then computed by summing the change in the intensity along path of each ray that is traced to the fluid control volume this ray tracing technique used in dtrm can provide a prediction of radiative heat transfer between surfaces without the need to calculate view factor thus the lesser the rays that are traced lesser the accuracy and also if mesh is coarse the accuracy reduces now let us see the advantages and limitations of the dtrm uh, radiation the biggest advantage or importance of the dtrm is that it has a direction sense it considers radiation rays in terms of tracing but this model also has limitations this model cannot account for scattering like the p1 model the model does not consider particle and radiation interaction as it considers rays it is computationally expensive than the p1 model gray gas approximation is there which means no wavelength effect it is not valid for parallel solver can give issues with heat balance and it is, the best result is only with optical thin medium now let us learn how to set up this model and after we activate the energy equation the radiation options uh, come where there we have to select dtrm and click okay after this dtrm raise dialog box will open as shown here now it is here that we input parameters for creating rays and clusters we input the number of surfaces but that are participating in the radiating uh, rays we select the absorbing cells also we set the cells per volume cluster and faces per surface cluster we also set the number of theta divisions and phi division for angular discretization this will decide angular discretization and formation of ray which is the basic assumption of dtrm that is radiation from certain solid angle region can be approximated by a single ray then click okay in the dtrm dialog box after that the select dialog box will open enter the name of the ray file and decide whether to write a binary file now ansys fluent will make the ray calculations write the ray file and read it afterward during the writing process the status of the dtrm ray tracing will be reported in ansys fluent console as shown here so this is the status of ray file writing now we have seen in the earlier slides that dtrm works on the principle that we convert the total region of radiation into smaller solid angle sectors and a ray is emitted from each such sector now we can further make groups of cell volumes and surface areas as well in order to reduce the computation effort required hence we need more inputs for dtrm first is the cell per volume cluster and second is the face per surface cluster the cells per unit volume will decide the number of radiating surfaces and absorbing cells the default value is 1 this means the number of surface clusters that is radiating surface is equal to the number of boundary faces the number of volume clusters that is absorbing cells will be the number of cells in the domain for large and complex problem and geometries we must reduce the number of surface and volume clusters in order to reduce the ray tracing expense or computational requirement we have to decide how many surfaces participate in radiation by setting the number of surface cluster but we still can input or control the number of rays which are been traced from each surface cluster for that control parameters are theta and phi divisions 
the theta division is the number of discrete divisions in the angle used to define the solid angle about a point on a surface. The default setting is 1, which means there is one ray traced from the surface. The phi divisions are the number of discrete divisions in the angle used to define solid angle about a point on the surface. The value varies from 0 to 360. The default value is 4. This means each ray that is traced from the surface will be located at 90 degree angle. Default setting of 1 for theta and 4 for phi combined means that 4 rays will be traced from each surface control volume. We should at least double the default in order to get meaningful result. 